This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to answer some more of your questions about soft forks, as well as respond to some comments from yesterday's video, which was called Mara Mining Prom Videos. Prom was obviously a euphemism, and this was a disgusting large opportune video that was mined by Mara and put in the blockchain, unfortunately. As Mr. Tech 33 said, YouTube revenue to the max. My response, actually covering this crisis nonstop for six months has only hurt my YouTube revenue, subs, views, etc. It's the number go up, quantum hype, Bitcoin treasury company channels that are maximizing revenues, not mine. My YouTube revenues are down 50% since I started this crusade because this is obviously a disturbing topic. It's very upsetting. It's complicated. It's technical. And so it's not exactly what you want to do if you want to get a lot of YouTube engagement, but it is necessary if we're going to save Bitcoin. Hi, WBU3 thousand writes in i used to love your channel matt but now you're making videos nobody cares about such a shame bitcoin is now negative for the year i don't think that's true we're losing everything and you're focused on mara great might as well sell everything and walk away my response i can only tell the truth and hope that people listen many bitcoiners only care about number go up ngu and bitcoin treasury companies but if the underlying protocol gets compromised the whole house of cards comes crashing down so i wish a lot of these bitcoin treasury and number go up people and influencers would wake up and cover this uh Ser kv writes apologies for my lack of technicalities is this offending block this block that mara mined a couple five or six days ago that contains the offending video. Is this offending block completely mined now and on the blockchain permanently? My response, yes, unfortunately, it's now going to be in the blockchain forever. Thanks, Bitcoin Core, and thanks, Mara. Expansive Adam writes, you may not personally like it, but isn't this just the most absolute form of freedom of speech, posting this video on the Bitcoin blockchain in a large op return? My response, no, this has nothing to do with free speech. It's like when you and your friends are playing chess and then some people come into the room and try to change the rules so that the game becomes checkers. Free speech is freedom from the governments, from governments trying to silence you. Posting videos on Bitcoin is like a spam email. It's an abuse of the protocol. And then Thomas W4298 asked, any chance this triggers the reactive method of a soft fork where if there's an offending video, we would try to reorg the tip of the blockchain and start have mining pools start binding on mining on the penultimate block. My response, no, it's way too late to try to reorg out or orphan this particular block at this point since it's buried under five days of blocks, now probably five or six or seven days of blocks. So this really is in the blockchain forever. Dathan Ohm, who's the author responsible for BIP444, he or she has written into Noster, and this was posted here on X. After much discussion and consideration, I decided to remove the reactive deployment method and the legal moral motivations from the BIP document. I still think those things are important, and the reactive deployment may become necessary in an emergency. That's what I was just talking about, where you reorg out a block. But I want to continue building consensus, and those features were hampering progress. I hope to have the new draft ready in the next day or two. Thanks to everyone for your support so far. So lots of people chomping at the bit, getting excited about a soft fork. Ralph ZYX asks, how can we support the soft fork when it's released? My response, there'll be a soft fork software client that we can all run, probably some version of Knots that enforces the new consensus rules. And Knots itself is a mod or fork of Bitcoin Core. So this software is all going to be very similar, but the key is to have the nodes that support the, our side of the fork to start running this new uh, software client. And it'll probably be available on on uh, Start9 and on Umbral, or you'll be able to download it on your laptop or desktop when the time comes. And it looks like we got Nick Zabo on our side and interested in this saying rug the spammer. So it looks like he is quite supportive of the path that we've been taking, possibly supportive even of BIP444. Code Warrior 5229 shares a sentiment that I think a lot of you share. What are we waiting for? Fork now, what's the holdup? My response to holdup is that coming to consensus is difficult. Imagine you're standing in a crowd with lots of people with lots of competing and overlapping views. How do you get most of them to move forward in coordination? And Code Warrior responds, I'm a, uh, I'm a take action type of guy, fix it now. And I, I am as well, but this is a little, a little bit like changing or reforming the US or doing something in politics as well. You can't just say we're gonna change the US. There are lots of constituencies. It's very difficult. There are bureaucracies. And Bitcoin has its own form of politics, which is consensus and consensus rules. So we'll talk a little bit more about this email question from a listener. I've been developing software for over 25 years. If Bitcoin Core version 30 is open source, 
why can't the bogus changes just be modified? I would happily support a zero, not even 42 byte soft fork for the up return. Bitcoin really is a monetary revolution, not a decentralized Dropbox service. In my opinion, I agree with that. On all my nodes, I have the ability to block peers for up to a year by right clicking and selecting block. Couldn't Luke Dasher add a feature to immediately ban any peer that was running version 30? My answer, we'll answer the first question first about why not just fork Bitcoin Core because it is obviously free and open source software. My answer, Bitcoin is quite different from your average open source software project. You can fork some FOSS free and open source app and change it to your heart's content and share it with the community. But Bitcoin is different because it relies on strong network effects. Any change to the software that is not widely supported by miners, mining pools, node runners, devs, exchanges, wallets, and other constituencies risks splitting the network into multiple networks. It's especially tricky to fork now that Bitcoin is a $2 trillion asset, and so many people and businesses depend on it for their survival. I don't think it's a good idea now in terms of the question, should you block your Bitcoin core peers on the network? I don't think that's a good idea even to block core 30 peers it's much better to keep all the parts of the network talking to each other, whether it's core or knots nodes or other implementations of the Bitcoin consensus rule. So I, would, I wouldn't do that and unnecessarily split the network. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'll pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That really does help get my message out. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. Share this video with a friend or family member. And all your questions as well are very helpful for making future videos. Be the coin writes, Matt, is it possible for a wealthy actor to simply buy and spool up 30,000, start nine, call it about $30 million worth of nodes and gain voting control of the protocol? It's important to note that this is not, there really isn't voting in Bitcoin per se, i.e. a single building node farm. If so, BIP444 should also somehow find a way to limit nodes by GPS geography of say a 20 mile circle or maybe 20, 20 meters, I guess it's probably 20 mile circle where no more than X amount of nodes can be online at one time. My response, no, fortunately, Bitcoin is not a democracy. There's no voting, but there is some voting at times in blocks. Miners can signal whether they're ready for a change, but there's no voting when it comes to the nodes. It's not a majority wins thing. There's no voting, but everyone can run whatever software they choose. And then if you run different rules, different software, you may end up forking yourself onto a new network. So it's very easy to exit, unlike in current modern political uh, systems in meat space. In Bitcoin, you just run different software. In cryptocurrency, you run different software and you're automatically on a new network if you're imposing different uh, rules that are not uh, that don't work together with the old rules, for example. Be the coin response, no, to not to belabor, but just trying to understand if BlackRock turned 30,000 nodes on to their preferred chain protocol, could they force the longest blockchain to be built operating under the protocol they want, forcing everyone's node to agree their chain protocol is the longest and therefore the correct valid chain? This is a very good question, so I thought I'd answer it more fully here. BlackRock can do nothing to Bitcoin unilaterally, uh, just like, for example, the, Bit the Bitcoin Knots team cannot do anything to Bitcoin unilaterally. You need to build consensus. So they still need to build consensus and get large mining pools, node runners, exchanges, etc., on board like anyone else. If the exchanges aren't, aren't on board with BlackRock, then miners can't trade their Bitcoin block rewards for fiat in order to pay their electricity bills. If node runners like you and me aren't on board with BlackRock, we won't add these new blocks to each of our nodes versions of the blockchain. If we don't add new blocks to our blockchain, miners cannot collect the reward from those blocks. And there's this 100 block delay when it comes to block rewards. And so they're going to quickly stop mining on that chain. So this is the confusion and it's something I'm still trying to think through myself. But basically, if you're playing a certain game, you have a certain asset and network like the Bitcoin network, for example, the longest chain, in other words, the chain with the most proof of work, the most accumulated proof of work wins and is considered the legitimate or canonical chain under that system of rules in that game, for example, which you could call chess or you could call checkers. But if you don't like the rules of that game, you can take your node, you can run different software, and you can play a different game, in which case you may end up being on a different asset or a different network because you've changed the rules of the game. And this is exactly what Bcash did in 2017, I believe it was. There's the longest version of the blockchain in Bcash, for example, but your node and my node don't follow it. And very few people care since they don't own Bcash or run Bcash nodes or run the software. And we can see that even right now. The, the irony is that Bcash 
increase the block size massively. I think the initial increase was one from one megabyte to eight megabytes. And in spite of that, their blocks are now almost completely empty. No one is using their network. So in the last block that was mined, there were only 197 transactions before that, 43 transactions. And the block before that, 33 transactions. Whereas on the Bitcoin network, the last three blocks have had almost 4,000 transactions, almost 3,000 transactions, and almost 3,500 transactions. So just because you have a chain and you've got a lot of space in your blocks and that chain has the longest proof of work, this is Bcash. It's following a completely different set of rules. They basically expanded the rule set or widened the rule set, which is what a hard fork is. And so now they're on their own network. So if BlackRock were to try some sort of funny business, there are ways to fight it. And BlackRock can't tell you what software to run on your node. And just one institution spinning up even a million nodes, you can almost count that as one vote or one institution. Obviously, BlackRock has influence with mining pools and owns some of their stocks. And so it gets a little bit complicated. But what the fork wars, what the block size wars of 2015 to 2017 showed us was that even the large Bitcoin companies don't have power over the protocol. That power is in the hands of the node runners who can always do a user activated soft fork, a UASF, to bring all the corporates, all the corporations, and all the large actors into line. So that's that's the good news about that. And if we take a look just at the comparative market cap, Bcash, market cap of only 10 billion, whereas Bitcoin a market cap of 2 trillion. So this is why we can say that Bitcoin really was the winner of the fork wars. Mechanic writes, uh, ship coiners are against BIP444 and advise that you run core immediately. And he's referring to this post by Ghost Dog, call to action, spin up core version 30 nodes. I encourage every member of the dog army, I guess this is some token, I'm not really familiar with this, but some sort of ship coining. I encourage every member of the dog army to download and spin up Bitcoin core version 30. Every node matters when potential forks arise. More core version 30 nodes means less control for those trying to end ordinals and runes. So if you needed any doubt, if you had any doubt that Bitcoin core 30, one of the main constituencies is ship coiners, you can see it right here. So this really is a battle, a battle among the nodes and the people who are siding with core version 30, they're ship coiners, they're out of touch or corrupt or gone rogue Bitcoin core devs and their supporters. So it's very important to run a knots node. It looks like we're losing a little bit ground here of ground here, the number of knots nodes uh, going down. Maybe people were spinning up some extra ones in advance of Bitcoin core version 30 being released. Fortunately, we're still at 20, 21% of the network, but the more people we can get running Bitcoin knots nodes and not fake nodes, you don't need to run more than one node. Just run one node and use it for all your transactions and really learn how it works. I'll put some resources in the description notes below how to run a Bitcoin Knots node on your laptop, on your desktop, or on a personal server that you either build or buy a personal server from Umbral or Start9 or MyNode or Parman, for example, Parman nodes. So I'll put links to all this in the description notes below so you can help to support this movement by running your own Bitcoin Knots node. That's really the thing you can do the most to help the movement right now, and then be ready to run the new activation software, the new soft fork software, when we get to that point. And it's really hard to know what that point will be, but it's important that we practice running software, practice running node software, and so we're all ready for when we need to make a move. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.